Hi everybody and welcome to The Bear Necessities. I'm Bear and this week we are going back to the basics a little bit. Uh, this was something that was requested a couple of times on Facebook and I was like, you know, let's try that. So this week we are making eggs. Something that seems to be a little bit of a mystery and I know it was for me for a while was how to make the perfect boiled hard and soft egg. Um, turns out you don't boil them. That was the best secret I ever found out, because it's not really a secret. You steam your eggs and they turn out great every time. What you will need is a pen. I've got about a cup of water here. Um, you don't need a whole lot when you're steaming. I have a steamer basket that I will be using. If you don't have a steamer basket, that's fine. Use less water, um, use probably only three quarters of a cup and you can just put your eggs directly into the water. It's not gonna hurt them at all. The steamer basket just makes it easier for me to kind of keep them together, <laughs> that's all. And so let's get started. It's really simple and it's kind of straightforward. You're going to start with your pan on a medium to medium high heat, just because you're gonna to need to actually get the water up to a boil or a simmer, but shoot for boil. All right, so. I have a handy dandy cooktop now, thankfully. All right, and just go ahead and get our water in there. And while we wait for that to come up, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. It only takes a moment. But in the meantime, so what we are doing is we're going to be taking our eggs and steaming them for six minutes and then for about 11 to 12, depending. These eggs are kind of large, so I'm going to shoot for more 12 and the six may actually end up being seven. Um, the reason for that is what I'm making is a almost, I don't know how else to explain them, a Japanese style soft boiled egg where the yolk is slightly set and very thick but when you cut into it, it just kind of pours out almost like a good poach, but the white is completely set. So your albumin set, the yolk inside is slightly. Uh, and then the, wow, it's already boiling, love it. Um, and then the hard boiled will be in there for 11 to 12 minutes. I'm probably gonna lean toward 12. And so that means that the yolk will be completely set. And then after that, we are going to plunge them into an ice bath. So ice and water, nothing else for 20 minutes because they have to come down quickly. Let's get our eggs going. And set a timer for six minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just meet y'all back here in, let's call it 12 minutes. I'll go ahead and cook both sets. All right, so the timer just went off on the second part uh, so this was the additional few minutes to finish. I finished right at about 12 minutes. So let's get these out of here. That is a spicy lid. All right. So one, two, and three. Okay, so they are in the ice bath, which stops the, cool, uh, the cooking process, which is really what we want here. I'm going to move this off to the side for now so it's not a danger. And let the surface of this cool for a minute. <clears throat> and in the meantime, we're just going to look at our eggs. Now I'm going to go ahead and let these sit in here for 20 minutes in the ice bath. I may actually pop it into the freezer just to keep it on the cold side because these eggs got extra hot. Um, but I will see y'all back in just a moment with um, the next steps. See you then. All right, kids, so we are back. I popped the eggs that were in the ice bath into the freezer for the 20 minutes, and it really helped them stay nice and cold. Now it's time to look at them. I'm just gonna crack one of each for now because, you know, time's sake. And thankfully, I had the forethought to mark which ones were which. So there's an X on the soft, and nothing on the less soft ones. Let's get cracking. One of the best ways I've ever found to crack an egg. It's just break the shell in one place and then you can just 
use your finger to shatter the rest of the shell and you end up not having to hit it on your counter so much. So one, you're saving sound. And two, it just, you don't end up with breaking your egg because you can feel how hard you're hitting it. And now the soft one. And you just do the same because the white's set up well enough that you're not going to hurt it. And these eggs are fantastic um, with ramen or just really any good soup, um, especially if you marinate them for a few days. Uh, you can find enormous amounts of great recipes for ajitama, which are the mar marinated eggs used for ramen. And they just have this sweet saltiness to them and they're really beautiful. And when they're made well, they are this perfect, perfect little runny yolk that kind of thickens your soup slightly. And it's fantastic. All right, so we have the soft. Um, a little bit of it uh, came apart, and that's all right. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, sometimes they stick if they're too fresh, not fresh enough, too hot, not hot. Like it, eggs are picky. So, and we're just going to very carefully slice. So as you can see, um, or not, because glare, uh, the <laughs> yolk in this is only set on the outside. The interior is nice and soft. It flows, but it's not just runny runny. It's got a little bit of a substance to it. And we're gonna go ahead and cut our hard boil open. One of the best things about steaming them I have found is because you don't run the risk of just overcooking them completely. You never end up with the sulfur ring on the outside of the yolk. It always comes out perfect and light and beautiful. And they're very tender and they hold up nicely. Y'all, that's, that's the basics. That's, that is how you do eggs and you do them quickly and you can do them in large amounts. That's the even better part is if you need to make deviled eggs or egg salad or something just for a quick dinner, it only takes a couple of minutes and you've got eggs ready. And they're really great to keep in the fridge. You just keep them in a little bit of a water bath for a couple of days. They don't hold too long, so don't take, make too many unless you're eating a lot of them each day. But they'll keep you going. This is good solid protein, a little bit of fat. It's not bad for you. To sprinkle on a little bit of pepper, maybe a tiny bit of salt if you're into that. Some hot sauce, always tasty. There you go, perfect snack. All right, everybody, I'm back and it's time for deviled eggs. I went ahead and got a couple more eggs done in the process. So I have five eggs sliced in half. I went ahead and put the yolks into this bowl so we can get going. In this bowl, I have one and a half tablespoons of Greek yogurt. You can also just use a tablespoon of mayonnaise for this small of a batch. If you're gonna do like a full dozen eggs, go ahead and do about three to four tablespoons of whatever you're going to use, either Greek yogurt, mayonnaise. I like the Greek yogurt just because it kind of gives it a little bit more of a, a solid mouthfeel um, and it's lower in fat because it has no fat. At least this Greek yogurt doesn't. And then I also have a tablespoon of mustard. Um, mine is a blend of just regular, ordinary uh, yellow mustard. And then I just put a, a little bit of Dijon mustard in because I had it, but you don't, have to, you don't have to use that. You can use whatever you have. I also had some really grainy good German mustard, but I didn't really want a beer flavor in there. So I avoided it. Then I have a little salt and pepper. There's about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in here. You don't need much, especially with everything that's in here. And then about half a teaspoon of ground pepper. And here I have a tablespoon of chopped onion and then a tablespoon of chopped pickle. Um, so you can use um, pickle relish if you already have it. I didn't at this point, so I chopped up a pickle and put it in here. Then I have one teaspoon of, I have smoked paprika, and so that's what I use as a smoked Spanish paprika. So it's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. There's not a lot of heat, but the smokiness in it is really lovely. And it also gives it a nice color. 
and then I have just a pinch of cayenne just for a little bit of a kick. You don't need much unless you like them spicy and then go for it. Just make them as wildly spicy as you want. One good thing that I used to do if you're into candying jalapenos was candied jalapeno chopped up in there. Otherwise, just fresh jalapeno gives it a nice crunch to the inside. That is absolutely delightful. Just chop it up really finely and toss that in. Yum. Maybe some bacon. Who knows? Have fun with it. These are deviled eggs. They are yours. You make them yours. Let's get started. So like I said, I already have the yolks in here with my Greek yogurt and my mustard. And remember, this is going to make way more than you can fit in your egg halves. So we can do a couple things with that. We have it left over. If you have other things that you want to use this in, like if you want to make egg salad, you can just top and toss this in there because a lot of the flavors, at least in mine right here, are what I use in my egg salad as well when I want just a good plain egg salad. When I don't want anything too crazy. And I'm just getting my yolks broken up and kind of creamy in here because we don't want any real big chunks of yolk. You actually want it to be fairly smooth it doesn't have to be perfect because there are going to be chunks of other things. And since I use the Greek yogurt in here, it's also kind of fluffing it up a little bit just because of the amount of structure that it offers. All right, so into that, I'm going to go ahead and add my salt and pepper, my onion and pickle and you can go without either one if you don't want them or if you have allergies to cucumbers or onions i used to and i grew out of the onion allergy thankfully um you can use again whatever you have if you don't have fresh onion but you have granulated onion use that use granulated onion it works really well granulated garlic is actually like garlic in your deviled eggs is really really good so try that surprise yourself add a little basil or basil, as some of you say, um, some oregano, oregano. Uh, another thing that would be really, really amazing in these, and this one in particular because of the sweetness, is a tiny bit of ground cardamom, if you have it. I know it's kind of a specialty thing, so it's one of those, if you have it, use it. If you don't, that's fine. And then we're adding our paprika. And I'm not reserving anything for the top of these, just because decorations for other people and these are for me so I don't really care about the decorations since I'm eating them otherwise you just sprinkle a little bit of whatever onto the top and make it kind of pretty now as far as getting this into these you have a couple of options This is one of the times where I will advocate, even for me, piping, just because it's a way to kind of get it even and not risk really breaking the eggs. Because at this point, while your egg, uh, egg whites are set up, they're still fairly delicate. They're not the strongest structure on the planet. So, you know, you can be kind to them. And a cheap and easy way to get around having to use a piping bag, if you don't have one and you don't know how to make a parchment piping bag, which Weirdly, I do, but I do not like doing it. Um, grab a sandwich baggie. Oh my God, that's so good. And uh, when you're using your sandwich baggie, if you have the ones that just fold over the top instead of you know a zipper baggie, those work really great for this because they're easy to fill and they tend to be cheaper. And once you're done, you can just rinse the baggie out and recycle it. Great, right? So we are going to get our egg yolks into this bag. So as you see, I folded the top down on this. It just helps kind of keep that top edge clean so that we can close the bag. If you have manual dexterity issues, as always, I try to take that into consideration. I grew up with people with them and I, one of my partners has manual dexterity issues. So we think about these things. Um, just if you can use one, use a spoon. 
just scoop a little, put it in. It's not gonna hurt it. I'm just saying that this can be easier and quicker. If, on the other hand, your, men, your dexterity is you can kind of squeeze on something, this might be your best friend because it's soft and it's large and it's easy enough to grip onto. So we're just going to pipe in a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> we're going to fill this in pretty well. Don't be bashful. These are deviled eggs. They're not to be, and they're not meant to be the best for you. So have fun. And I'm going to be putting in about the equivalence of a full yolk, like as, as far as the size. It won't be anywhere near there as far as what's actually in there. As you see, I still have quite a bit left over. So get this last one piped up and then even out a few of the others. So none of them are sad. We don't like sad deviled eggs. And like I said, the rest of this can go into an egg salad, a chicken salad. It would work really, really well. And I'm gonna, because it's my kitchen, my rules. Yum. Um, the smoked paprika in that, absolutely killer. It's amazing. Almost makes it taste like there's bacon in there, which makes me so happy. I love bacon, y'all. It's just really hard on me. So you'll rarely ever see me have it. However, here we are. Easy, simple, quick deviled eggs. And if you want them even more simple, mustard, mayo, pick a relish if you want it, salt, pepper, and then a little bit of paprika. That's one of those key flavors in there. So try to stick to that. If you don't have paprika, it's not gonna hurt anything. Just go ahead and do it without it. But it just kind of adds a little bit of oomph. So if you do have it and you don't mind using it, Go for it. There we are. And now my boys have a little bit of a snack. <sighs> I'm glad we got to start doing a little bit of basics. I'm going to be doing at least one more egg episode. I don't know when that's going to come out yet. Um, but I'm going to be covering something more than basic there. And yet at the same time, it's actually a basic. We're going to be doing poached eggs two ways. So one is going to be in the pan like a regular poached egg. The other is going to be one that I learned a long time ago and it has saved my butt when I've needed to make a large amount of them quickly. And then I believe on top of that, we're also going to be making one of the mother sauces. I hope you enjoy making some steamed eggs, but these are a good solid, decent for you snack that aren't high in calories. They're not high in fat and they're tasty. Hope you enjoy making them as much as I always do because the end results are always delicious. Until I see you again, bye.